probably one of the most exciting audiences we had in a while here. It's gonna be a big one, Hilda. How's everybody doing? Okay. Emerald Lagasse here, welcome to Emerald Live. And hey now, it doesn't matter what the latest trends in food is. We have gotten so many requests on the old www.foodnetwork.com for guess what? Nachos. <laughs> is everybody just sort of in like a little Say Olay. Olay. Speaking about Olay, we got Doc Gibbs in the MLA. <laughs> Guess what? It is Macho Nachos right here on Emerald Live. How you doing, folks? Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Thanks, Macho nachos. Look at all these wonderful things, huh? Peppers, chilies, jack cheese, corn, beans, kicked up peppers. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. Well, what we've done is we've taken some tortillas, and uh, I recommend that you could do this as well. Flour or corn, depending on what type you like. And then basically what you can do when you're ready, you don't have to use that bag stuff unless you want to. I just take some of these tortillas like this, cut them in sort of, these will be in six. Take some vegetable oil, heat it up to about 360 degrees. Oh, hi, Jay. <laughs> And then we'll just sort of fry them, sort of spread them out a little bit. And we got fresh tortilla chips. That simple. Well, you got to have good tortilla chips to have some macho nachos, as they say. Now, they'll cook fairly quick. We'll get us a little plate here. Line it with some little paper napkin for the oil. And then what I also have in a saute pan. You like nachos, Doc? Oh, I love them. Well, we're going to make some kicked up ones today. Great, great. Now, what I got in a saute pan over here is a Mexican sausage called chorizo. It's a pork fat thing. A couple of hogs in the back there scared me. So it's a pork fat thing, and what we're going to do now is we're going to drain these. And when you're doing these, you can do them in batches ahead of time. Nothing like fresh tortillas. Just make sure one thing. When you're done and they come out of the oil, salt them. As much salt as you like. And then they're ready. All right. Now, to this brown chorizo, we get the heat going here. Not a lot of fat. It's a pork sausage, a lot like... My friends in Fall River, Charisse, Charisse L. Oh, man. We got a house full today. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to add some, some cooked pinto beans, a little chili, and a little cumin. What I want to do is just sort of, with the back of the spoon, just sort of smash a few of those cooked beans a little bit, get some of the starch in there. Can you smell that? Oh, yeah, man. Now, look, if you're doing this and it gets too thick, like mine is right here, don't panic. Just add a little H2O. 
get that evaporation thing going on a little bit here. Oh, yes. I wish you could smell this. I'm going to add about 40 cloves of garlic in here right now. All right, so what we want to do is this. Don't have to be fancy. Taking a oven wear pan, some nachos on the bottom. Looks like enough for me. <laughs> Jalapeno peppers. Gonna add a few of those in there too. Oh yeah, babe. Little salt. Okay. Now, so we've got that. I'm going to add a few onions. And then uh, huh, we're going to add some sausage mixture in there. All right. Oh, yeah, man. A few more. Uh, oh, wait. I got jack cheese and a uh, sharp cheddar cheese as well. You with me so far? Good. Let's do it again. Another layer. <laughs> Some more sausage. Now, a few more onions. Why not? And then, more cheese. Okay, we'll add more. <laughs> You're not killing me, believe me. <laughs> I'm with you. 350 degrees, we're gonna put these uh, chorizo nachos in the oven. When we come back, guess what? Another notch! Here. We're cooking up some macho nachos tonight. Speaking about that, we got some in the oven right now, just getting all nice and gooey. Still leaving them nice and crisp, not saturated. What we're going to do now, we're going to take some sour cream and add the juice of a lime. Well, that was a munch juice in that one. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Now we'll add the juice of another lime. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. All right, so we've got a little lime cream right now. Mix that in there. I don't want it too thick. I'm trying to use the lime juice not only to get the acidity, but also the lime juice to uh, sort of thin out the sour cream a little bit. One more. Not limey enough. <laughs> the way we're going, we'll just break out the tequila, right? <laughs> yeah, break out the tequila. Forget the nachos. <laughs> All right, now this is about the consistency that we're going to go. All right, so now, here's what we're going to do to just sort of finish this first nacho macho here. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. Looking good, good, good. There you have it right there, okay? 
So now what I want to do to finish this is take a little bit of that cream that we had, that lime cream. <laughs> and we'll finish it with a little bit of cilantro. Okay, just sort of bust it up like that. Nothing to get fancy like that. There you have it, the first macho nacho that we got, huh? Have a taste of that, Chef. All right, I'll get you two. One of those other great uh, Tex-Mex, I think, that uh, really are fantastic in the New Mexico area is um, Chili Rianos. I love them. Absolutely love them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little oil in the skillet here and add the corn from one cob of corn. And I kind of want a little salt, a little pepper. What I want to do is kind of let it almost roast in the pan, getting this little, it's going to almost like pop. Want to get some brown color in it, get that flavor going in the corn. So while that's happening, chili rellenos are made with this kind of pepper here, a poblino pepper. You can buy them in most supermarkets these days. And they're not like super hot, they're just hot enough. They're great to make mole, some different chilies, as in like soup chili. And this is what you use for chili relleno. They have a skin. Oh yeah, that's what we like. We love that. If Orville only knew. Now, they got an outside skin on them that we need to sort of char. If you have an electric stove, you can do it on the electric stove. You can do this on the grill. You can do it in the oven, actually, in a hot oven. But what we need to do is we need to char this, as you can see that I have one here, so that we can peel this outside skin away. All of that's going to come off. Now how you do that when it gets all nice and charred is uh, you can just put it in a paper sack. I just put it in a bowl and cover it with plastic, sort of let it steam a little bit. It makes it easier to peel. Then when it peels the skin, it looks like this. So now it's just the meat of the pepper. You with me so far? Yeah. All right. Now that the corn's got great color, what we're going to do is add a little onion to that and some jalapeno. We're going to add some garlic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. And we're going to add some chili powder. And what we're going to do is just sort of let those meld a little bit, those flavors. So hopefully you got... See how it's charring like that? Okay? Well, that's exactly what you want it to do on, on the sides evenly. Then let it cool by putting it in a sack or plastic over it. That's going to steam it a little bit. Makes it easier to peel. Okay? You don't really even have to do it under water. Then when you got them peeled, now you're ready to stuff these. What I do is I make just a little slit with a knife, as you can see. I don't want to force it open and I use my finger to take what seeds are in there and discard the seeds. If you want to eat seeds, hey, go ahead. You don't have to. You're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> so now they're ready to stuff. Now, we got our corn mixture. What I have here is some softened cream cheese and I'm going to use some jack cheese as well. And then what we're going to do you're supposed to let this cool, this corn mixture a little bit. Okay. Now, it's nice and cool. Now, what we're going to do, depending on how many chilies, we have about 12. Work all that corn 
inside with the cheese. And when it's all mixed in together, you're going to form, let's just say we're going to do 12 chilies. We're going to form 12 little logs, okay, about this big. Let me show you. Maybe about this big. And then what we're going to do, shaping them logs the easiest way. You can use a pastry bag too, but I find it easier this way. We're going to take where we made that slit, you see, and we're going to stuff this right inside of the chili pepper. Okay? Now, if it needs some help, you can always add some toothpicks to just kind of keep it. Because what we want to do when we stuff them, we're going to dip them in egg wash, which is just egg in a little water. We're going to dip them in a little egg white that we whisked a little bit, nice and light, into seasoned flour, flour with a little essence, and then into our hot oil, 360 degrees. Okay? We come back, I'll show you what they look like. Doc Gibbs and the MLI Band! <laughs> everybody, Emerald Lagasse here, and uh, we're just frying the poblenos, and then what we're going to do, you want to season them when they come out, make sure you got all the oil, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put them in this oven pan here, now, we've got them lined up, we're going to taste some queso fresca, Fresh cheese, right? Over them. A little more. All right. And then what we're going to do now, we're going to pop them in the oven that I got fairly hot. This oven's about 500 degrees. I don't have it on broil. I just have it on super hot. Speaking about super hot, let's make a little kick to this. Let's kick it up a notch, if you will, right? I got some rock shrimp, rock shrimp from the Gulf, little oil, and we're going to start sauteing some of those rock shrimp. Now, they're going to cook fairly quick. What we're going to do now is add a little bit of onion, red onion, to this. Some jalapeno. Got to have a little garlic, right? Yeah. Now, what I have over here is some tomatoes. You cut tomatoes, you let them sit like that. What you want to do is you just want to add a little bit of salt and pepper to them. It'll bring out all that nice flavor that it has. Stop breaking a little bit of that acidity down, getting the flavor of the tomato. And I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro and just a touch of oil to this, a little olive oil, okay? You with me so far? Yeah. All right. Now, our rock shrimp, believe it or not, are almost finished. See, they got these built-in thermometers in them here, okay? So now what we want to do, because... We've got it so high, we want to check. Oh, it's just about there. Woo! Starting to melt all of that on the chili rellenos. Oh, yeah, we got our rock shrimp right over here, just kind of, it's getting happy. You can't really see it. Certainly can't smell it at home. But trust me, it's getting so happy right now. Like the onions are kick kicking in, jalapenos are kicking in. Oh, yeah, that essence on the shrimp is just getting, it's getting happy. It's getting happy, happy. Hey, you know what? We're so happy. 
We're so happy here. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! Master Cliff here on the keyboards. Yeah. How about Lewis on them horns, huh? Yeah. Sir Charles on the bass. Yeah. We got Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And who's in the house? Doc Gibbs in the house. Yes, indeed. Emma Lagasse, welcome back, folks, making some pick up nachos and machos and more so now let's uh let's get our chili rellenos out we uh we fried them we put that fresh cheese we got them in the oven we got that wonderful shrimp rock shrimp sort of salsa i see you just kind of one kind of two Nice portion for me. <laughs> we take the rock shrimp, just kind of, just take the rock shrimp and just kind of take the rock shrimp. <laughs> and we take a little bit of chives, oh, and a little bit of parsley. Bam! Yeah. There you have it. Coming at you. You know, I said earlier on the program, I don't know if there's some sort of, like, craze going on right now for this sort of Tex-Mex, New Mexican kind of food. I wasn't joking about how many hits that we had for that WW Food Network, but you know what the number one dish was after nachos? Fajitas. Yeah, that's okay. It's only 70 million people watching. <laughs> Get right in there. So um, I want to sort of give you one of my quick uh, fajita deals, okay? Real quick, real simple. Here's the, uh, the biggest thing right here is finding this. Years ago, it's called skirt steak. Years ago, it never was called that. It was called London Broil. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it switched over to skirt steak. Went up about four bucks a pound. <laughs> but that's okay. You got to cut it against the grain. But before we go there, here's what I do. I make, first of all, a simple little marinade. I use some Mexican oregano, crushed red pepper, a little bit of allspice, and some cumin. And of course, some cilantro and a little bit of parsley. And then I just got these garlic cloves that are sort of smashed like this. You know, it just. And I just sort of take the fork and I just sort of mash the garlic cloves even more for this spice, you see? And then what I do, a little salt, uh, a little more salt. It's really simple the night before. And look, you can do this in a grill pan. You can do this outside, preferably, because it will get smoky. But what I do is I just get the skirt steak and I just stuff it in this bag. What a way to go, huh? Then, yeah, skirt in the bag. <laughs> then what I do is I take this spice mixture and dump it right in there. 
I zip it up. Now, there's other things that you can add in here. We could add, say, a touch of oil. We could add this what's that hand sauce over here. <laughs> there's something about this sauce that I just love. You know, you read a lot of recipes. You read some recipes that say, I add a couple of uh, drops. By the time you get a couple of drops out, that's evaporated already. <laughs> and I'm going to use a couple of limes, the juice of a couple of limes. So you with me so far, right? Yeah. All right, so what we do is that we just sort of massage this and get it all nice, happy, keep it in the ice box, zipper it up. Every now and then you get a little frustrated throughout the night because there's nothing but Emerald Live on TV. <laughs> You can just go in the refrigerator, just sort of massage it again. See, I feel better already. <laughs> and you do that. Then, the day before, when you're ready, see, I got it, look, can you get a shot of this? See, I got, look, I got a nice little happy pan. It's not gonna go anywhere. Not gonna drip on anything that we got in there. And then what we're gonna do is that we're ready. We've got tortillas. We could chop more tomato, we could chop some onion. But when you're ready, we just put it on the grill. Then, with a little oil, while that's cooking, it ain't gonna take much time, I add some onions and I add peppers. Because that's what they say goes with fajitas. I don't know. I'm not the fajita police. But it sounded good to me, so we got peppers and onions going. And we got the skirt steak on the grill. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, everybody, in the Emerald Band. Everybody, hey now, we're really cooking here tonight. Little Tex-Mex, New Mex, ooh, yes. The Chilorianos are out in the wilderness right now. And uh, the fajitas are on. Just been cooking this skirt steak that we marinated. Turn the heat down low for our peppers and onions. Also, while we were on the commercial break, I ended up taking some big, oversized tortillas and uh, I wrapped them in some foil like this and I got them inside the oven now, covered like that. You don't want to dry them out, covered. So uh, we can warm those up for our fajitas. Oven's on about 300 degrees or so. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, we're looking for a little mid-rare to medium. It's about rare right now. My thermometer, <laughs> trusty thermometer, tell me. So while we're waiting for that to come up and we put these delicious fajitas together, let's talk about this next dish, using a pork butt. Oh, yeah, man. That's an order of the, uh, my pork fans back there. Yes, indeed. Why am I using this pork butt? You know, I'm just searing it in some oil. I got it lightly seasoned with salt and pepper. Because, you know, when you cook this, the butt of pork, you um, cook it for a slow time in a low oven. You can do it on the stove, too. But what's going to happen is that this thing, after a couple of hours, it gets so happy, it starts just 
surrendering. It just breaks down. It gets nice and tender and happy. I love that. And um, I thought we would do this sort of with maybe a little bit of black beans and show you how to sort of do this little uh, mex, if you will, sort of uh, buttermilk dressing. Oh, yeah, you'll see. It's, it's here, but you'll see. <laughs> so what we want to do, now that the pork butt is browned, okay, now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add some onions to this to make sort of like a little bed. A couple of bay leaves. A few cloves of garlic. Some of that Mexican... Some of that Mexican oregano and a little cumin. And then we're going to take some chili powder. Now watch what we're going to do. Now we're going to take the butt and we're going to start just coating those spices and the onions and stuff. Oh, yeah. Nothing like a good butt. Now, can you smell that already? How? Smell those rustic? Okay, so now, once those onions cook a little bit, what we're going to do is we're simply just going to take a little bit of water. And a little pinch of salt. And then we're going to cover this. We're going to let it come up to temperature here on the stove. Then we're going to put it in about a 250, 275 degree oven for a couple of hours. And you're just not going to believe what's going to happen. If you don't want to use it for this dish, it's good for pulled pork sandwiches. It's good for, oh, it's so many great things that you can do with this. But it's got to take a little bit of time. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our skirt steak off. Let it rest for a second. Cut a little lime juice. Just a little lime like this. And then we're going to get our tortillas out of the oven. <laughs> Keep them nice and warm, just in case you don't have one of those, you know, tortilla warmer things. Now, a couple of minutes after this uh, rests, you want to go against the grain on an angle. See that? Oh, look at this. And then, ready to put them together. Sort of, you go get one of those nice hot tortillas like this. Keep the others warm. And I just kind of... Look, peop, everybody's a little different. People want salsa, they want sour cream, they want... To me, lime juice, some of the peppers and onions. Then fold it like this in half. Fold this part in half here, this part in half. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. Oh. oh, yeah, babe. All right, I told you I was going to show you how to make this quick mix sort of uh, dressing, buttermilk dressing. That was cilantro, chili powder. Crushed red pepper. Got to have garlic. Some onion. Then I add a little bit of lime juice. Some sour cream. This is a really awesome dressing. Then what I do is I add buttermilk. Oh, yeah, buttermilk. Then we just sort of blend those ingredients together. And we're just going to take a little bit of oil, slowly, emulsifying this dressing a little bit. Now we're going to let this sit and let it mold a little bit. Let it get the flavors going, okay? 
Going to bang out a couple of fajitas. The pork's getting nice and tender when we come back. Another notch! Back in. Manja, manja. Welcome back. Making some macho nachos and then some. You all having a good time so far? Yeah. Okay. About 2.15, that pork butt. Took it out. Took it out of the liquid with two forks. Just forked it like that together so nice and tender. Here's what you want to do. Taste it. Make sure... What I just did, I added a little bit of the liquid inside of the pot, a little bit of more salt and pepper. I've got that ready. Got some cheese, whatever cheese you want. Got our buttermilk kicked up, and I've got a few accoutrements here, some tomatoes, some lettuce, some avocado. Tortillas. You're not going to believe this dish. We're going to put that right inside. Some hot oil. This is my version of uh, chalupa. <laughs> so when you leave here, you just walk down the street, and just occasionally go, chalupa. <laughs> They'll know where you came from. Be very careful. What we're going to do now is turn this thing over. Are you guys with me over there? Yeah. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. It's time to get happy, happy, happy with the uh, Emerald Eyes Chalupa. <laughs> Some people roll them, put them in there. Here's what I do. I take a bottom layer like this. Add a little salt. Mm! <laughs> take another tortilla. We're going to put this right inside the oil. Now, buttermilk. I go just a little drizzle like that. Then I need a little avocado. So here's what we're going to do with that. Nice ripe avocado, cut it in half. Then what I do with the half, what I need, I just sort of score it like this. Be careful you don't go through with your hands. Take a little spoon. I got some avocado. You with me? Oh, yeah. Now, I want to kick it up a little bit, so I'm going to use some chipotle pepper, which are really, really hot. It's a smoked jalapeno. All right, going to turn over this. Oh, look at that, huh? Now we're going to get serious. Going to add a little bit of tomato in here. Going to add a little bit of lettuce. Certainly got to have some cheese, right? Then you take that nice pulled pork, and you just put it like this on your chalupa. Everybody, chalupa. <laughs> See, you got that now. Then what you do is you just take this out. Let it all just get drippy and lippy and all that stuff. And then you put that one right on top like that. And that's what Emerald calls chalupa. Okay, you just layer it like that. Layer it. Now, those of you at home, if you want to kick it up another notch, it could be a kalupa, as in kicked up shalupa. <laughs> just do another layer and stack it up. Just keep, sometimes I just go 50, 60 layers. <laughs> I lose my sense of timing until all the butt is gone. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. All right. So this pulled pork you can use for other things. You can use them, I've used it in omelets. 
Uh, you can use it in just nice uh, biscuits that you can cut with barbecue sauce. It's fantastic. Uh, Kushan Delay in New Orleans, that's exactly what it is. It's just amazing what you can do with just one little pork butt like that. You got to cook it slow. Macho nachos. Hey, some stuffed poblano peppers, chili rellenos. Fantastic. We had a good time. I'm Emerald Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And I guess what? See you tomorrow.